What's going on? What's going on? Oh, I know it's like really, really late. Um, I'm not even really expecting for any, well, to see many people right now. This is mainly just for me to release because the Holy Spirit told me to. And I'm sure that uh, most of you will watch this later on today or tomorrow for some of y'all who are already asleep. Um, <clears throat> this is going to be very, very short because it's my prayer time and bedtime right after that. So it's going to be very quickly, but uh, I'm just going to uh, kind of expound on something that the Lord was uh, talking to me about. I think it was earlier today yeah it was earlier today and he just reminded me of now and he said uh to do a video so here it is um it's pertaining to uh when you have visions and prayer a lot of times you might be uh praying you know some of y'all might be intercessors some of you may not but at any rate you might be praying and while you're praying you may start to get visions of people, places, uh, different, you know, various events taking place. Uh, these may be things that, uh, these may be places you've already been to. These may be events that have already happened. These may be events that you already know about that are going to happen. These may be events that you've never seen, that you've never heard about, um, and uh, even as people. There have been plenty of times where uh, I'll be in prayer and I could be praying about one thing and then all of a sudden out of nowhere or seemingly out of nowhere, uh, the Lord will show me the face of someone I've never seen before, like literally never seen before. But I see their face clear as day um, before I go further, you know, just to kind of preface this a little bit. Uh, this is for whoever is for, you know. I'm just doing what I'm told. Um, but there are a number of you who do have visions when you pray of lots of different things. And there are a lot of you when you're praying and you had these visions, you're saying, what the heck is this? Like, what's going on? Um, so this is what this video is for really quick. Um, but anyway, you'll get visions of these people, people you've never seen before. And, uh, you know. What's that? The old song, somebody prayed for me, had me on their mind, took the time to pray for me. I'm so glad they prayed for me. Um, now, one thing, uh, the main thing, honestly, that the Holy Spirit brought up as to uh, how and why a lot of times God may give you visions of someone you've never seen before that you don't know, you know, is because we tend to rationalize and reason and a lot of times when God is showing us stuff, sometimes we can ask too many questions. Sometimes we want to know every single detail right up front when a lot of times it's not even time to know anything about it. Sometimes he's just presenting it to you right now and just saying, hey, receive this. I'll tell you about it more later. Then there are other times where, to be quite frank, the details of it is none of your business. There are literally some times where you may be praying and the Lord will give you a vision of somebody. And as you're getting the vision of, of whoever this is, even if it's somebody you've never seen before, there's a very specific reason why the Lord does this. This may not be the only reason, but it's one of the main reasons why the Lord does this. If... Oftentimes, I do get visions of people that I do know very well, and I pray for them often. So, uh, subsequently, I get visions of them often. Um, a lot of times, I'll get visions of them, and the Lord will specifically tell me what to pray for regarding those people. But then there are other times where, as I said previously, I may get visions of people I've never seen before. Now, to the people that I do know that I get visions of it can and is very easy to question like, okay, I wonder what's going on with them. It can get even more confusing. Um, when you do know things that's going on with them, good or bad. And 
you'll be praying but instead of continuing to pray objectively it's very easy to then kind of shift into praying through the lens of reason like okay i wonder what's going on with them or you may know certain things that's going on with them so then you'll be trying to pray along those lines when God may be bringing their face before you to pray about something totally different or it may be regarding the situation that you do know about but it may be regarding a certain component of that relationship that or or that situation that you don't know anything about either way a lot of times God gives us visions of people that we don't know that we may never know we may never meet um to simply objectively pray a lot of times if you're giving if you're if you've been given an assignment and it's going to affect someone that you don't know and all you have are the instructions hey i want you to do a b c and that's it and you don't know who it's going to affect and your only task is to just complete the job then as long as you have a heart uh, a heart to obey to adhere to the instructions in most cases you're not going to mess that up and that person that you're praying for is now going to get exactly what they need because your propensity to reason and ask all these other unnecessary questions isn't going to get in the way so there are a lot of times when it comes to those who are familiar with us and uh people that we are familiar with family friends acquaintances co-workers whoever um to where even if it's not intentional we wind up enabling them a lot um even naturally uh either naturally or spiritually because we think that because we know certain things about them that we know how it's going to end up when certain situations that they're dealing with may look similar to something that we've dealt with or it may look similar to something that they've dealt with previously but again isaiah uh chapter 55 verse 8 god clearly says that hey my thoughts are not your thoughts my ways are not your ways um for that reason you're not always going to know how the story ends sometimes you may think you know how the story began and it may not be that at all um god is constantly trying to draw us into deeper realms of submission and obedience to him not just so he can um not just to rule but so that we are open and available and connected to him enough to where we really can do exactly what he's called us to do um how he's called us to do it when he's told called us to do it so that that perfect will can be perfectly executed through us we're we are god's apparatus we are his instruments we are his tools we are we are his vessels and the more we are yielded to him as a vessel nothing more nothing less while we're being used then that will carries through us a lot easier it's just like the veins in your body if you have clogged arteries some blood might get through there but you're not going to get as much and you're not going to get what you are going to get as quickly as you probably should and after a while if that buildup continues and that artery gets blocked you know completely you probably gonna have a heart attack or a stroke or both and die because it can't an artery a vessel has to be completely open and unconstricted in order for the blood to flow through to to take that same analogy and to go a little bit deeper that vessel's only job is to both carry and dispense a substance that's more valuable than itself from one place to another that's the vessel's job a blood vessel a vein it's filled with blood 
But the only job of that blood vessel, of that vein, is to carry a substance that's more valuable than itself, that, that blood, from one organ to the next. You know, throughout your entire body. It's not designed to do anything else but to be open, to receive, and then to dispense, to release. It's constantly in a state of simultaneously being given something and releasing something. We are to be the same exact way as we present ourselves to God. Romans 12 and 2. Um, Romans 12 and 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. That sacrifice, you are making the conscious decision that I am going to objectively submit and obey to what the Father wants. He wants me to be completely open and available to him at any time, in any way, to do whatever it is he wants to do through me. That's literally why I was created. So that is a sacrifice, especially to do it on a consistent basis. Uh, my charge since April now, I think, April or at least May has been to get up every morning um, between 3 and 4 a.m. Because that's a struggle. I know in order to be able to be available and to lay before God between 3 and 4 a.m., a lot of times I just stay up until then and then pray and then um, and then go to sleep, like what I'm doing tonight. Um, so, yeah, my job is to come to him do this surrender make myself available and then he reveals to me hey okay this is why i wanted you to come meet with me this morning this is what i want to say to you lord jesus i'm feeling the presence of god just 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 explaining this it's not until we make the sacrifice in most cases that we receive anything especially revelation and instructions it's not until we yield first. It's not until we submit first. If you look at pretty much any of the promises that God has made to us in his word, it starts with a condition. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, that's a sacrifice and pray. That's another sacrifice. Seek my face. That's another sacrifice and turn from their wicked ways. That's another sacrifice. Then I will heal their land and all the other promises he made. I can't remember them all right now, but you get the point. You've heard the scripture. Um, those prerequisites are objective and unmovable. Those are the requirements. Hebrews 11 and 6. For without faith, it is impossible to please him. The faith is the prerequisite to pleasing him. For he that cometh to God must believe first. He must believe first that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That's another sacrifice. You have to seek him, but it didn't just say seek him one time. It said diligently. That's concomitant with um, with being consistent. You don't just seek him tonight and just be like, all right, I'm good for the rest of the year. It's like, no, that was good for tonight. Do it again tomorrow. Same time, same place. All right, you did it two days in a row. Hey, that's awesome. Do it again the next day. And then you keep doing it. And then after a while, you don't worry about, okay, well, I've done this 12 times now. I must be getting a breakthrough soon. It's like, no, you must um, delve into the reality that this is a lifestyle. This is literally your life, you know. Um, so when it comes to that objective submission to the Holy Spirit, 
again, at any time he wants, in any way he wants, to do whatever it is he wants, to say whatever it is that he wants you to say. It's not easy, but oh my God, it is worth it. Listen, I'm at a place in my life, I don't have nothing to go back to. I don't have anything better to go back to, I'll say it that way. Am I tired right now? Absolutely. So what? I'm good. God, I sleep well every night. God always restores me every night. You know, um, it's not easy. But again, like I said, I can only speak for myself. I have nothing better to go back to. Do I like getting up at 3 a.m.? No. Do I like the benefits that come out of seeking God's face at 3 a.m.? Yes, I love it so much. Lord Jesus, I love it so much. Oh, my God, you have no idea how much I love laying before the creator of everything and just waiting to hear what he's going to say to me, waiting to hear and feel and experience what he's going to do. Like, oh my God, there's nothing better than that. Yes, it starts off with the sacrifice, like having to get up at that time or staying up, whatever you do to just make it there. There are literally times where I might be tired throughout the day and even into the evening. And it's like, Lord Jesus, if I can just make it to 3 a.m., if I can just make it to 3 a.m., if I can Sometimes I might, you know, go a little further and, and start at 4 a.m. But if I can just make it there, Lord have mercy. Every single time I drop to my knees and lay before the most high after that sacrifice, man, what he winds up giving me in return. <laughs> it in a way it almost it no, in a way it, it convicts me because it's like, Lord Jesus, how like, why did I ever complain about this sacrifice? Like, I don't even, what he gives me in return, it makes the, the little bitty minuscule sacrifice that I made look like just that minuscule, little, small, almost nothing. Like, dog, this is all he asked for? And he gave me this? Like, whoa. Listen. Those who are you, those of you who are watching right now, who might watch later, maybe you're not as crazy as me yet. I don't know. Maybe you shouldn't be. I don't know. I, I'm just walking the path. I know that God has laid out before me, but I know the things on the surface that I'm sharing with you tonight. They are for everyone who who serve Yeshua Hamashiach, the Most High. Um. Again, to recap for the ones who who just tuned in. I did want to um, go back to a point that I made a few minutes ago at the beginning of the video. Um, and it was pertaining to uh, visions that you get in prayer. Um, I know at least two of y'all that's online right now. I know for sure that y'all are intercessors, that y'all pray for people. Ashley, what's good, sister? We got to catch up, man. We got to catch up for sure. Um, but I know y'all are intercessors. And there may be some times where the Lord may give you a vision of someone you know but then specifically what i was dealing with though is the times where you may get visions of someone that you don't know or, or somewhere that you've never been and it's crazy because when you get those visions either in open visions or dreams or however you know god gives you those visions sometimes it's like although you know in your in your natural mind that you really don't know this person in the spirit it's like i know exactly who that is or it might be somewhere in your dream or in that vision. It's like somewhere that you've never physically been. But in the spirit, it's like, yeah, I know exactly where that is. You know, um, but what I was saying at the beginning, for those of you who are, just, who are just tuning in, was a lot of times God does that. He gives us, he reveals to us unfamiliar things, people, and situations. Sometimes just so we can simply... And objectively carry out the task that he's setting before us. Because there are a lot of times when we get visions of people that we know. 
we tend to have a bad habit of trying to rationalize like, okay, why am I seeing, you know, Ashley in my dream? Why am I seeing Deborah in my dream right now? Why am I seeing Lamar in my dream right now? What's going on with him? What's going on with her? God didn't show you any of that in a lot of cases to ask what's going on, what's going on. It's like if God showed it to you, the only thing that you need to focus on or or I'll lighten it up a little bit. The first thing, at least, that you need to be focused on is simply just praying for them, receiving the vision and just continuing to pray. And then as you do that, God knows already before he even sent you the vision, he already knows whether or not you even need to know who this person is. He already knows whether or not you need to know or or don't need to know who this person is. He already knows that. So if in case he does need you to know who this person is, if he showed you who they are, then why would he not show you who they are or why he showed you? But don't 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 become fixated on the why. Just focus on what, what was given. What did, what did he show you? He showed you a face. Then keep praying. If you're praying in the spirit, which you should be every day, then just continue. There are a lot of times when I'm praying in my prayer language and then the Lord will just start flashing visions in front of me. And it's like, because when you're praying in the Holy Ghost, when you're praying in the prayer language, it's the Holy Spirit praying through you anyway. So it's like if you just become fixated on that vision instead of why you got the vision, then the Holy Spirit, he already knows if he's the teacher of all things. then that means he knows all things. So if he's already praying through you anyway, just stay focused on what the Lord showed you. The Holy Spirit already knows why you're being shown this. So then the Holy Spirit is interceding between you regarding that person. And he's sending it back up to the most high. It's like, okay, this person needs this. This person needs that. And you know what? While we're using this vessel right here to communicate and to bless this person over here, we're then going to take care of this vessel's stuff too. You know, um, I did a, a video a couple days ago and uh, I was talking about um, God's ability and willingness to provide. And of course, I use uh, Matthew 6 and 33, but the context that I came from was just simply uh, seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And I talked about how um, oftentimes that verse is erroneously expounded upon in that most people, be it theologians, pastors, whoever, most people say and teach, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness as almost of like a, a hierarchical uh, concept, like seek God's kingdom first before you go seek the other things. But it never said that before or after that verse. Like it wasn't even any context before or after that that um, in any way alluded that you should seek God's kingdom first before you seek the other stuff. It said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. If they're going to be added, that means you don't have to go after them at all because you're already focused on what you're supposed to be focused on. So as you focus on his kingdom, his righteousness, just seeking him, then he already knows you need X, Y, and Z in the process. So as you focus on that, He's placing you on the path he wants you to be in. And everything he has set up for your life is already on that path. Just seek him and then you'll come into all the other things, you know. But again, people uh, erroneously teach on that uh, particular verse because they simply just say, okay, seek God's kingdom first and then you can go out and seek all the other things. You're wasting your time and you're going to burn yourself out because he didn't say to do all of that extra stuff. He just didn't. He's God. He's Jaira for a reason. He provides. 
He provides. Even me as a man. I'm not a husband or a father yet, but when I'm when I become both, yes, I will be the head of my household. I will be the priest. I will be the provider, the covering, the protector, all those different hats. However, when I have children, yes, they're going to know me as daddy, as father or whatever. But at the same token, they're going to know that daddy submits to God. And daddy teaches us how to submit to God. Daddy bows down all the time and he acts weird sometimes because he speaks in this language that I don't know about and he's crying and all this other stuff. But he teaches me how to do it too. That's real leadership. You know, yes, when I become a husband and a father, yes, I am naturally responsible for providing natural things and spiritual things and emotional things to my family, to my wife and my children. However, both my wife and my children, when those when those people are added to my life, will know that most of all that my husband, that that my father submits to God, he receives from God these ideas for his businesses, for all of the work he does. And then he teaches us how to seek God so that we can do our parts as well. So it's all, if you don't get anything else out of tonight, this may sound simple, but it is paramount. Submit to God. Literally everything else you are ever going to need to know will come out of that. He did not ever say to submit to him or to come to him because it's easy to do so. He did say to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. He's telling you straight up, yeah, I know it ain't going to be easy. That's why you need me to do it. But you can't do anything I'm calling you to do without me. But that also is comforting because it's like, wow, it's good to know I don't have to make this stuff up. It's good to know I don't have to really come up with anything. I just submit and follow what's already laid out for me. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. It's not always fun, but it is always worth it. It's always worth it. And I will say as you develop a lifestyle of continuous consistent submission to the most high in his will it does become enjoyable because you begin to experience a safety a soundness of mind a peace that cannot be compared to anything else to anything else I know that there are a lot of things currently happening in the world and there are a lot more things that are about to happen I sleep well every single night knowing that no matter what's about to happen, what's currently happening, and what had just, has just taken place, I sleep well every single night knowing that no matter what I'm currently going through, what I'm about to go through, that I'm divinely protected, that I'm divinely provided for, that I am divinely loved beyond myself. Like that, that's a safety and security that, uh, that cannot be monetized for sure. Um, that cannot be measured by anything on earth, you know? Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to start doing this, man. Like, this is cool. I know it ain't, but like, I think like two people on here right now, but I love this. Like I'm a night out anyway. I am mad sleepy. I mean, ain't no denying that right now, but, um, I love this time of night because it's quiet. It's not a lot going on. You know, you can think clearly. And, uh, you know, those who are hungry enough find themselves up around this time. Uh, coincidentally, or not coincidentally, divinely for a lot of people. Um, so, yeah, this is cool. I'm here to feed and to dispense everything that's been placed in me to any and all of those who want to receive. Plain and simple.
Um, I'm actually about to go ahead and log off and go into prayer. If anyone who is watching right now has any prayer requests of any kind, go ahead and begin to uh, throw those in my inbox. And I will certainly uh, talk to the Father about them. And uh, yeah, bless you, Ashley. Bless you, Ashley. Bless you, Deborah. Um, but yeah, if you have any prayer requests of any kind, just uh, hit them in my inbox. Those who are going to watch this later on today, if you have any prayer requests, put them in my inbox anyway. Um, I pray at other times throughout the day. So uh, as I see them, I will go ahead and lift them up to the most high. Um, so that's pretty much it for tonight. I got to save this last little bit of energy. I got to, uh, to pray. So I love you all. I genuinely mean that. I love you all. I'm praying for you. Pray for me too. And don't pray on me. Won't do you no good anyway. Love y'all. Shalom. Good night.